Hello, my name is Jane, and I'm doing a video uh, about the American cultural reaction to the body ritual of Narasimhas um, in my topic one reading. The Narasimhas have lived in a few places. One is Canada uh, Creek, and another place is somewhere um, in Mexico. And uh, there are no known origins of the Narasimhas. They have a body ritual that sounds odd when you first read it. For example, um, the Narasimhas body ritual is that they take a bundle of hog hair and they put it in their mouth with a magic powder. They move this hog hair and magic powder around in their mouth uh, and, you know, um, formation gestures. Uh, when I first read this, it sounded, um, gross to me, honestly. It, it did, um, because it's hog hair. Um, but when, to come back and think about it, um, it, you know, it sounds like they're brushing their teeth. Another thing that the Narasimha do in their culture that is different from what we, you know, what we tend to be normal is that they have a shrine in their home. The shrine is built into a wall. Either it has a box or it is a chest. And in these boxes or chests uh, would be charms and potions. The family would get a charm or a potion from a medicine man. A medicine man would write down the ingredients that they would need for these charms or potions. And the only ones that would be under, able to understand um, what the medicine man ingredients would be, or what they are, were the medicine man and herbalists. Um, so they would go out and they would get the items that they need to for these potions and the charms. And they would give them back to the client. And the client would use it for whatever thing they needed it for. And if they had extra stuff, from these charms and potions, they would put them in their shrine. And it was very common that if you would go into their home and you'd you see their shrine, that the, the uh, boxes and um, chests would be overfilling with these charms and potions because they would forget what the use, what these charms were used for or they would be afraid to reuse them so they would just go out and get talk to the miss man about it and they would get new charms and potions um, a ritual that the US culture worldview would be I would say um, church um, because every Saturday and Sunday usually a business is closed or they have shorter times that they would be open um, so to go from there would be that no one would really work on a Sunday they would be closed because what they would do is that we would go for a church service and they would have a pastor or a father um, leading the ceremony in front of the whole church. And the sizes would be either a big group of people, a little group of people. Um, I know the church that I went to, we it was on the smaller side, um, but everyone knew each other. It was very welcome. And there was a program for the children to do well. Our pastor was giving their, our sermon. So you know, the kids weren't 
making a lot of noise. They'd be downstairs uh, in their class. The next thing is that Sundays is, you know, a, a day that everyone would go to church. And so, um, this going to church on the Sunday has happened for as long as I, I know that it has been going on. And then, you know, m many different cultures would, you know, have their church and it would usually be a Sunday that they would go and do their ritual things at church. Um, for to uh, the U.S. culture because it has grown over so many years. It has brought a lot of people together to worship the Lord and also bring each other together. So that would mean that um, like we would come as a community and help one another. Like it would be from picking up trash in our neighborhood and keeping our uh, community clean. And another one would be we would have support groups for new moms or just new parents uh, and helping people who have, have gambling problems or a drinking problem that they would have these programs that they would come and help these people um, to get better in whatever situation they are, are in. And so I, I'd say having a church benefits the U.S. culture immensely because they help one another they with food, clothes, programs for mental and physical health. Um, showing that hey we may not be your family but we care and we want to help and they don't ask you for money to be a part of that group um so the site that i found that would that went with this i have two um so first one is man this is impossible, but with God, all things are possible. Matthew nineteen twenty six, And the other sighting that I have goes, As a church, we are in a community together trying to fulfill the great, great mission that Jesus left us with. As we gently press together press in each other we form one united thing his church as we work together sharing this space God give us given us to do his work we all become shaped a little different we all become a little more like him. Jennifer Ellen Lane, Faith's, Faith Advantage Stories of Learning with the Unseen God. Uh, thank you for watching.